Can we talk a bit more about what, what's happening at the moment in relation to North Korea, which is something we haven't mentioned yet? So some people are saying, OK, a few months ago, three or four months ago, we were worried about a nuclear war in North Korea. Now we've got uh, Kim Jong-un meeting with the president of South Korea, deciding to, to a bid to host the Olympics together, agreeing to denuclearization, and that that is down to Donald Trump's tough foreign policy. No? Well, I mean, I think his foreign policy has worked incredibly well on one country in the world, and that's China. I was in China um, a few weeks ago and was very struck that they see Donald Trump in completely different terms to how he's seen in the West. Most of my American friends and all of my European friends see Trump, as you described him at the beginning, as a kind of buffoon who's self-defeating and kind of destructive and, and doing um, uh, all sorts of things which, which undermine American interests. And I do at a kind of fundamental level, as I said in my first answer, but at the same time, in China, they think that he, he's both a kind of master strategist and a master tactician, that he basically um, pushed them, um, uh, they think that he's been declaring war on them on kind of three fronts, on an economic front, on a kind of political front, and an ideological front. And they use North Korea as the kind of prime example, where he ups the ante, creates a real sense of crisis, puts the uh, Chinese government under so much pressure to introduce sanctions that they shift their position six or seven times. He, they get to the point where uh, the North Koreans almost see the South Koreans as kind of sworn enemies, their closest allies with the only country that they have a treaty relationship with. And then when he realizes that he's run out of road, he shifts tack, basically tries to do a deal, and, um, uh, and then opens up a new front with the Chinese on trade, um, which we're now on at the moment. And I think, actually, uh, you know, having seen various different presidents and lots of Europeans fail to make any headway on the Chinese, there is some kind of uh, logic in, in terms of how he's handling with China. Is he helping on North Korea? Um, I think it's much too early to tell. Um, I'm happy that they're talking rather than him threatening, you know, tweeting about Rocket Man and threatening preemptive nuclear strikes at the moment. But I do worry that um, as a result of mistakes in, in Western foreign policy over the last few decades, we've created uh, very perverse incentives for the, for the North Koreans. Having seen what happened to Saddam Hussein, to Gaddafi, I think it's quite difficult to see why North Korea wouldn't want to have nuclear weapons and why a North Korean leader wouldn't want to have nuclear weapons and why he trusts Western assurances that we will uh, not try and change the regime if, uh, if they get rid of their nuclear weapons. So I'd be amazed if they really do do that. Um, and then it, ripping up the Iran nuclear deal at exactly the moment that you're trying to do a deal with the North Koreans um, on nuclear weapons seems like an inexplicable and sort of catastrophic decision. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens. I also worry that if this fails, as it's quite likely to, it will then empower the hawks like John Bolton within the administration who want to go back to using military solutions against North Korea. And I think that is the, the scariest thing. Um, so I do think we have every uh, incentive to try and make this work as much as possible. I think that you have very wise leadership being shown by the South Korean authorities that have been trying to handle and, and to manage um, uh, uh, Trump. But they're in a very risky position because they uh, have exposed themselves enormously and Trump is totally unreliable and unpredictable and um, uh, that could be another big casualty of, of, of this affair but I, I, I think um, you know the time to make past judgment on his on his North Korean diplomacy is probably in sort of five or six years time rather than at the moment yeah okay so George we've heard a very passionate denunciation from you of the rules-based international order can you tell us what you think should replace it? And, and, and don't shout, please, because you've already got a mic, uh, a mic on, and I think it's just too loud for everybody. Kindly let me decide the tone of voice in which I uh, well, it hurts my ears. address the uh, <laughs> We don't want another half-life of a conflict between you and I. Um, the, uh, Donald Trump is an unpredictable, unstable uh, person. Uh, he's not a strong and stable genius. Uh, he's a bull in a china shop. Uh, and to mix the metaphor, even a stop clock is right twice a day. And he was right to meet with the North Korean leadership. And he was right to encourage a rapprochement between 
North and South Korea, and it's going swimmingly. In fact, it's practically a love-in. The Koreans uh, are embracing each other with a warmth and vigor that no one could possibly have imagined, and Donald Trump's predecessors would never have permitted. This is important. Barack Obama would never have met Kim Jong-un, and therefore the permafrost of North-South Korea relations uh, would have continued. So and, and not only would Barack Obama not have done it, Hillary Clinton would not have done it. And so if we are looking objectively at this thing, uh, you have to say that Trump was right uh, about Korea and the others were wrong because Korea has been for decades a, a clear and present danger to world peace and, uh, and stability. It's not that I'm passionately denouncing the rules-based international order. I'm passionately denouncing the fact that there is no rules-based international order. You just call lawlessness a rules-based international order with some mistakes, some breaches. But how many breaches does it take uh, to invalidate your thesis in the first place? If you have what you call an international rules-based uh, 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 system in the world, which is not just breached, not just mistakes, but which kills millions of people and renders the whole world completely unstable. How many times does that need to happen before your thesis is invalidated? Now, for most people, it long ago ceased to be credible to call it a rules-based international order. And I refuse to accept your thesis, that's all. I haven't got a thesis. I'm just asking you two what you think. Well, your thesis but is that there is an international rules-based order. Oh, I see. And, and, and my case is that it's abundantly clear that there has not been. And that, therefore, attempts to exceptionalize Trump, which is the liberal mantra, are nonsense. He's only been in 23 months. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.